In this fourth lesson on how to build chords from scratch, we're going to call this segment the coda. A coda, if you don't already know what that is, is basically the final ending of a song. So, in the first three segments, we gave you a really pretty complete understanding of how to build chords from scratch using the major scale to find where all the intervals exist so that you can assemble the chords you're looking to play. Here, we thought, you know, there is value in knowing how to build chords based on a first, second, and third string root as well, particularly since these chords tend to be partials. Partials, for the sake of this example, are three note chords, where you're playing the first, second, and third string, or you're playing the second, third, and fourth string. Okay? So, what I've decided to do is just run through a couple of concepts to help you understand how it's done. You'll need your chord plotters because there's no written material. So the chord plotters will help you understand exactly what I'm doing. I tell you what chords I'm playing and where the roots are so you'll be able to use the plotters to understand what the intervals are that I'm actually playing. Okay? So, the best thing to do is just dive right in, alright? So let's go. Alright. We're going to play A's E's and D's, and we're going to use the first, second, and third strings for this. So, for the A, we're taking the D form, right? And we're just going to take D, E, F, G, A. And we're going to play the D form just on those three strings. And then we're going to take the A form of the E. So here, there's your A form right there. So we bring it up here, and your root is on the third string, okay? Yes, this is all caged system stuff. And then we move down two frets to the D, and we're using the A form there, root also on the third string. Okay? So, root on the second for the A, root on the third for the E, root on the third for the D, two frets lower. Let's go here. We're going to use the E form of the A, just the top of the uh, full bar chord. Root on the first. Now we're going to go to the D form of the E, root on the second, and of course the D, root on the second. Root on the first, root on the second, root on the second. So you can play it like this, or you can play it like this. Your choice. So now let's combine those. Two, three, go. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Let's keep going. Now we'll play the uh, the A form of the A up here. Root on the third. And then we're going to play the E, right, uh, right, root on the first, and the D, same form, root also on the first. And you notice the second finger stays on the third string. Now let's blend all these together.
Okay? And that's E's, or excuse me, A's, E's, and D's, all up and down the fretboard on the first three strings. So you see chords really are just all over the place. All right? Now, if we go to the A form and just play the second, third, and fourth string, there's the A right there, right? Because you got it there. Now, your third finger's gonna come up and you're, okay. Your root's right there on the third string, but now we're gonna play the E, just the second, third, and fourth string, so we have to move over to the fourth string root. And then down two frets, D, root to the D chord. Okay, and now we're gonna play the D of the A here, but we're gonna play the C form of the A, but without the bottom note. And we're just gonna play those three notes, still rooted on the second string. The E, just like the A, rooted on the third string. And the D, also rooted on the third string. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to use this form of the A chord based on the E form, fourth string root. We're going to use the C form of the E, but without the lower note, second string root. And D, also second string root. So you can string that all together. All right. And that's really the core of that. A, E, and D. Now, you can move it anywhere you want. So I could play here, C, right? G and F. So second string root, third string root, fourth string or third string root here. So all of this is movable because there's no open strings. You can move it around. This is A, that's C, right? That's E, that's G. D, F. It's the same idea. You're just moving it around. Now, what if we wanted to play an A minor and a G and an F? Okay, so if we play the top three strings, all we've done is taken our three tone and flatten it we're still here on the second string root. And that's the D form of the uh, minor chord for A. And then we come down and play the D form of G, and then the D form of F. And you have A, G, F, all second string roots. Okay, pretty cool, huh? Okay, so here is the A minor on the top three strings with the root on the one. So you're playing the E form of the E A minor and then the A E form of the G and the F, right? So all E forms, root, on the first string. All right. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go to 
the A form of the minor chord, A minor, root on the third string, G, root on the third string, F, root on the third string. Okay, so now let's connect them together. Okay, pretty easy stuff when you think about it because you're just using partials. And you can do that with any type of chord you want. And that's the whole idea. So I hope this gives you a little more understanding of what's going on. So if you wanted to play a D and a D sus two, well, that's your three tone. And this is the fifth string rooted chord, or you want uh, your uh, third string rooted chord. Right? You just lay your first finger down and play it like this and put your first finger across both of these strings. There's your D sus two. And if you want a D sus four, just raise the three one. And there you go. And this is all third string rooted. Right? Or you can play it based on the second, third string. So third string with the D to the fourth string with the A. And we're just playing on the second, third, and fourth strings. Right? <laughs> and uh, there's your sus four. So you're probably kind of familiar with a little bit of this, but it's always good to get a little review. Right? And uh, that's the idea. You play around with these ideas and really make them work for you. And that's really what it's all about. So. I hope this gives you uh, a little more stuff to chew on, okay? And um, if you need to rewind, by all means, do just that. And you'll see there's a lot of vital information here you really need, okay? All right, there you go. Some little afterthoughts about how you can further expand your chord knowledge by going into partials rooted on the first, second, and third strings. I hope this gives you food for thought and stuff to chew on. That's the whole idea here. Nothing deep, nothing really super heavy, just a little extra information that I thought you really should know and that I wanted to share with you, okay? So again, thank you so much for your time and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you press the little red button down there in the corner, you'll be subscribed to Outsmart Your Guitar. If you then hit the notification bell, you'll be informed when we upload new material, which is usually around once a week. Below the video in the description, you will see a link that will take you to where you can download a PDF of the lesson material that accompanies this video. All lessons contain a link to give you access to the written material for that lesson. Below that, you will see a link to Patreon Outsmart Your Guitar, where I have a lot of material that isn't included here. So you may want to check that out. There's two levels of subscription. 
I'd really appreciate if you would become a patron by subscribing at one of the two levels and help support my efforts to continue to provide high quality lesson material for you to help you learn, play, and grow to become the guitar player you desire to be. All right, thanks very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, hey, we'll see you soon.